Good morning. I hope all of you had a very Merry Christmas yesterday. And I personally am very delighted to see each and every one of you here. Um, I was afraid I might be talking to about two people, Joyce and Tracy. <laughs> so it's lovely to have all of you here this morning. I would ask you to please take a moment to silence your cell phones and then join me in a time of silent prayer and meditation. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who gave us your only son, born as a baby in Bethlehem, lived on this earth as one of us for 33 years, died in our place, rose from the dead, and ascended into heaven, preparing our way into your presence. Open our hearts to hear your voice this morning. In the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Please stand and join me in the call to worship that's printed in your bulletins. Let us praise the name of the Lord. Leaders and followers, old and young, all of God's beloved children, all people everywhere, as with the angels. Let us come and praise the name of the Lord. Let us worship God. Please remain standing, turn in your hymnals to 124. Come now, long expected Jesus. seated and join in the unison prayer of confession that is printed in your bulletins. Let us pray. Holy God, though we are in awe of the dawn of your light in Jesus Christ, we remain self-centered and cling to the sin of the world. We celebrate the birth of our Savior, yet we struggle in our commitment to follow him. We are called to justice, love, kindness, 
and walk humbly with you, yet we are content to seek our own comfort and conveniently ignore the cries of those in need. By the light of the Christ child, lead us on the path of goodness and righteousness as we seek to love all of your bountiful creation. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen. Let us bow our heads and join in a time of silent confession. Hear the silent groanings of our souls, O Lord, and see our hidden tears. Heal our hearts with your ocean of forgiveness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hear the good news. God has forgiven you, so let the Prince, the peace of Christ, abide in your heart. Christ, we are forgiven. Please stand. be seated. And I guess you all are my kids this morning for JLK time. So uh, please try and be as enthusiastic as the kids are. So when I say good morning, are you going to answer me? Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Okay. I had planned to answer, to ask them to say good morning in a couple of different languages, but I'll spare you. Okay. Although I will say Good morning and fröhliche Weihnachten. So, um, I bet we all got some wonderful gifts yesterday, the day before, whenever we held our, our family Christmases. And there is something else that comes with those gifts. If you were raised in a family like mine, that would be thank you notes. The rule in our family was if the person saw you open the gift and you said thank you in person, you didn't have to write them a note. But if they weren't there, you wrote them a thank you note to acknowledge the fact that you got the gift and to thank them for their care and consideration for sending the gift. In these days, it could be an email, a text, a phone call. doesn't have to be a little note card. The fact that your gift is acknowledged is enough. But what I'm thinking is, we just celebrated the greatest gift of all. How do we send a thank you note to God? The best way to send a thank you note to God is to give him all that we are, all that we have, and all that we do to be a living, breathing thank you note to the Almighty God who gave us an unimaginable gift that we celebrated yesterday. So let's pray. Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you for the gift of your Son. Let our lives be our thank you notes to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for coming, kids. Yes. <laughs> so now we come to the time of uh, our prayer concerns, um, God's work in our church through prayer. Um, are there some prayer concerns that we need to raise before us this morning? Yes.
Okay. It's never a good time to hear that diagnosis, but it's particularly hard in the holidays. Yeah, Carla? I want to say thank you in regards to my cousin. Um, who started therapy, and she's doing wonderful. And so she'll be in the hospital another month, probably. But I get to keep my cousin. So Carla, tell me her name. Mary. Mary. Yes. Um, we have a lady that's joined us in our knitting group, and she lost her mother last Saturday. Oh. Her name is Elaine. Her mother's name is Shirley. Okay. Others? Connie? Anything else? Yeah, Kate? My great niece came in down in Georgia to buy a present and she's home in Lincoln. <laughs> Good. Okay. Amy? Yeah. Amy. Okay. She had the eye removed. Yes. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Yeah, Hildy? Oh, which daughter-in-law? Marlene. Marlene, okay. Okay, anything else? Yeah, Marlene. I'd like to say to my daughter, Kim. Okay. We will lift her up in prayer. Is that it? All right. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we know that you know all things. You know them from the beginning to the end. You know all people. You know all hearts. The things that cause us great fear the things that hurt our hearts. You know them and you knew them before they happened. Nothing surprises you and nothing is outside of your recognition and your control. So we lift up to you these concerns that have been raised this morning. Deb's friend, Deb, with the cancer diagnosis. Carla's cousin, Mary, Elaine, at the loss of her mom, Shirley. Connie's brother, Jonathan, who has been diagnosed with COVID. Marlene Ray, who has been diagnosed with COVID. We lift up to you, Marlene's daughter, Kim. You know what need the needs are. We just pray for her. And we praise you for the good outcome of Amy's eye surgery, that everything went well. We know that you will continue to be with these, our friends, our loved ones, as they work through everything that is occurring. We lift up to you Ken Bridgeford, and Pauline Schroyer, Carol Rue, Donna Jenkins, Jeff Sweetland, Sam Waldron, Ed Martin, Vicki Thomas, Harry Fink, and our Marlene, who is with us. Marlene Keller is with us this morning. We thank you for all of your good grace, your provision, the fact that you are never far away. We are never alone, even in times of fear and doubt. Thank you that you are with us 
in all. We lift up to you all of these precious ones that we have mentioned this morning. We place them in your hands and we thank you for your provision. And we thank you collectively saying the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now we come to the time for God's word. And um, I wanted to let you know I will be reading from the New American Standard Version of the Bible. And uh, the first scripture is actually Matthew chapter 1, verses 8 through 25, not chapter 18, verse 25. Connie, my mistake in not, yeah, you gave me the bulletin to proofread and I didn't, so I'm very sorry. So we read from the first chapter of Matthew. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph before they came together, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her, desired to put her away secretly. But when he considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for that which has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. For it is he who will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place, that what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet might be fulfilled, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child, and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. And Joseph arose from his sleep and did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. And he took her as his wife, and he kept her a virgin until she gave birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. The second reading is from Matthew chapter 2, and I'm going to add a few verses, um, 1 through 15 and then 19 through 23. So chapter 2. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. And when Herod the king heard it, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And gathering together all of the chief priests and scribes of the people, Herod began to inquire of them where the Christ was to be born. And they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the leaders of Judah. For out of you shall come forth a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. 
Then Herod secretly called the Magi and ascertained from them the time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make careful search for the child. And when you have found him, report to me that I too may come and worship him. And having heard the king, they went their way. And lo, the star which they had seen in the east went on before them until it came and stood over where the child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And they came into the house and saw the child with Mary his mother. And they fell down and worshipped him, and opening their treasures, they presented him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned by God in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their own country by another way. Now when they departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to destroy him. And Joseph arose and took the child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt, and was there until the death of Herod, that, was, that what was spoken by the prophet might be fulfilled, saying, Out of Egypt did I call my son. And then skip to 19. But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise and take the child and his mother, and go into the land of Israel, for those who sought the child's life are dead. And Joseph arose and took the child and his mother, and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning over Judea in the place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And being warned by God in a dream, he departed for the regions of Galilee, and came and resided in a city of called Nazareth, that what was spoken through the prophet might be fulfilled, he shall be called a Nazarene. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. So we hear a lot about Mary in all our Christmas messages and songs and sermons, and that is all good and right and proper. She was just a young girl when the angel spoke to her, and she willingly accepted her role from God, even though she knew full well that she would pay a price. Censure from her friends and neighbors, ridicule and scorn from others. She certainly would have feared disbelief, the disbelief of her parents and from her betrothed husband, Joseph. She knew it would appear that she was no longer sexually pure. Grounds for death by stoning, by the way, pursuant to ancient Jewish law. In addition, it would appear to Joseph that she had betrayed him, and betrayed his trust. In the face of all that, still Mary chose to be obedient to the will of God. Luke relates Mary's song of praise before the Lord in Luke chapter 1, which states in part, And Mary said, My soul exalts the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior, for he has regarded the humble state of his bond slave. For behold, from this time on, all generations will count me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. What is quite often either understated or entirely overlooked is that God did not just choose Mary alone to play this pivotal role in the history of all mankind. Mary was already promised to Joseph. And according to, Joseph, to Jewish custom, they were already bound to one another, even though she was still living in her parents' house. When God chose Mary 
to bear his son. He chose Joseph to be his son's earthly father. We read in Matthew 1, verse 19, And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her, desired to put her away secretly. In this first test of his heart, Joseph responded with love and honor and compassion. God then sent an angel in a dream to reassure Joseph, saying, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for that which has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. The angel continued with more reassurances from God's holy word. Joseph wakes from his dream and takes Mary as his wife, thereby giving her his protection in their society. Luke specifically adds that Joseph kept Mary a virgin until after Jesus was born. Again, an honorable sacrifice on the part of a new husband. Matthew records three more dreams from God given to Joseph. Each time, Joseph immediately obeys to safeguard the life of his wife and of God's son. In chapter 2 of his gospel, Matthew records Herod's treachery, his rage at being disobeyed by the Magi, and his slaughter of all the baby boys in Jerusalem under an age, the age of two years. Again, Joseph receives instructions from an angel of the Lord in a dream. He is told to take the child and his mother to Egypt to remain until further instructions. Joseph immediately obeys, and this family of three, of three flees in the middle of the night, heading to a foreign country with a pagan culture where they were basically political refugees. Although the scriptures don't give us details of their life in Egypt, the fact that Joseph was a skilled carpenter would have been a way for him to find paid work anywhere. Joseph and Mary had already experienced God's faithfulness and provision and would have known full well that they would be shielded and protected by the God of their fathers. After the death of Herod, Joseph is visited by an angel in a dream for the third time, telling him it was safe to return to the land of Israel. But when Joseph learned that Herod's son now ruled over the province of Judea, he was afraid to return to their home in Bethlehem. The fourth message from the angel of the Lord was directions to travel to Galilee instead of Judea. So they journeyed to Nazareth. Through all the troubles, turb turbulations, and turmoils, Joseph demonstrated his love for his God through his loving care of Mary and her son. Joseph listened for God's voice through his angels and obeyed the instructions he received without hesitation. Joseph, who was a direct descendant of King David, was also clearly a man after God's own heart. Joseph was chosen by God to be the earthly father to God's only son, born to save mankind. Both Joseph and Mary show us a beautiful way to respond to our Heavenly Father, first by hearing and truly listening, then by accepting him at his word and believing him, than by doing what he asks us to do. I began this morning's message with the song of praise sung by Mary. I'd like to end it with words penned by Michael Card in his beautifully moving and lyrical Christmas song simply entitled, Joseph's Song. I believe his words were directly inspired by the Holy Spirit. How could it be 
this baby in my arms, sleeping now so peacefully. The Son of God, the angel said. How could it be? Lord, I know he's not my own, not of my flesh, not of my bone. Still, Father, let this baby be the son of my love. Father, show me where I fit into this plan of yours. How can a man be father to the son of God? Lord, for all my life, I've been a simple carpenter. How can I raise a king? How can I raise a king? He looks so small, his face and hands so fair, and when he cries, the sun just disappears. And when he laughs, it shines again. How could it be? How could it be, this baby in my arms, sleeping now so peacefully? The Son of God, the angel said. How could it be? Please bow with me in prayer. Holy Father, thank you for the gift of your Son, whose birth as a human child we celebrate now. What an incredible sacrifice you made in order to give each of us such a perfect gift. May our lives be a living thank you note to you for your unimaginable gift to us. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Please stand and join me in hymn number 167, O Sing a Song of Bethlehem.
Thank you and be seated. And if, if you haven't figured out by now, when I preach at the very the last of the year or first of the year, you get subjected to two of my fam- favorite Christmas hymns that we don't sing very often. That was one of it. Story of the entire gospel in a nutshell. So is the next one that we'll be singing. Just so you know. <laughs> so I do have an announcement here to start off our uh, um, time of announcements. Um, it's not in your bulletin, but... Jerry Stogsdill's funeral is this coming Wednesday, the 29th, here at the church. Visitation is from 1 to 2 here. The service is from 2, it starts at 2. And at 3 or following the service, there will be a luncheon here that you're all invited to attend. Are there any other announcements? Well, that's short and easy. Okay, so now let's acknowledge the presentations of the tithes and the offerings. Please stand for the doxology. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the gifts that are offered to you today to further your work and your will here in Coal Valley and beyond. We thank you for every good thing bestowed and every perfect gift which is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. Amen. So go ahead and turn in your hymnals to the very next page from the one you just sang, hymn number 168, Who is He in Yonder Stall? Who is He in Yonder Stall? At whose feet the shepherds fall?
God for us, we call you Father. God alongside us, we call you Jesus. God within us, we call you Holy Spirit. You are the eternal mystery that enables, enfolds, and enlivens all things, even us and even me. Every name falls short of your goodness and greatness. We can only see who you are in what is. We ask for such perfect seeing, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Amen. Mm -hmm. 